Australia Adept is a nanofiber technology that we are using for biopurification. And briefly, what that means is that we're able to provide a platform that has a very large open porous network with a very large surface area so that we can apply chemistries to allow the user to purify biological feed streams in a way that they haven't been able to do before. That's all about compressing processes and giving access to larger modalities that can't be purified effectively elsewhere. The most exciting parts are not only to do with the technology itself, the Australia Adept technology, but also with the team who are developing it. We are a team of disruptors who are developing disruptive technology that allows the user to do things that they couldn't do before. And we are supporting, assisting, and are driving the development of new products with our technology every single day. We are disruptors. It's not just in R&D, it's throughout Australia. Disruption is key to getting things done quickly and breaking a traditional paradigm so that we can go faster than anybody else and allow the user to go faster than they've ever been able to go before. So not only are we contributing to a fantastic product that defines its own space, it's just truly disruptive, but I'm also working with an incredibly talented bunch of people at Australia who are truly described as disruptors. So it's not only the product, but it's the people that I work with that generate new technology rapidly using initiative and making things happen in a way that I've never seen happen anywhere else. That means that we can drive from idea to market in record-based times. And again, the output is that that only helps the patient. And of that, I'm particularly proud, not only of the product, but also of the team who've developed it. Typically within the biopurification environment, uh, the vast majority of users have been using technology that's been established for the last 60 or 70 years. That means that they are using technology because they can, not because they should. We have a new cutting edge technology in Australia Adept, which allows us to provide them with a set of tools that they haven't had before. That key differentiator means that we can give them access to protocols in a much more efficient way than they've ever been able to do before. So simply put, how do we differentiate? We can outcompete the current technologies that are being used traditionally within the biopurification sector. With our first uh, launch technology with the Lenti Hero, people have been using that as a process optimization tool. They've been using that to push through things that would have taken significantly longer using kind of conventional uh, uh, adsorbents. That translates into faster throughput for any of the kind of PD operations that people can now do on a more meaningful sort of scale. So with the new uh, with the new radial devices, we'll be able to give them a tool that will predict performance all the way up to manufacturing, and that will allow them to accurately uh, cost out all of their scalable operation and delivery of any kind of large uh, moiety that they're trying to purify. So when we think of things that are currently very challenging to purify on the existing uh, chromatography adsorbents like lentivirus, like exosomes, or large, uh, much larger um, uh, nucleic acid sequences, they can all be done with the, the new technology. And that's what people have been most interested in. It's allowing them to do something they can't do currently. So I think that the advantage of what we're trying to do with our design philosophy is that we're trying to make this compatible with all of the current chromatography uh, hardware, uh, from kind of lab scale uh, equipment to anything up in the kind of single use ecosystem that's used for manufacturing of all these kind of advanced therapeutics. So people will be able to implement this and they will see the utility of it quite quickly. And the fact that we will be able to do things which currently either give very low yields or just aren't possible with this kind of uh, technique, I think that will allow people to really expand what they're doing. So if you think about the current kind of uh, gene therapies where we're looking at sort of limited capacity, limited size of the, the gene of interest that we can insert, that's a limitation that we can try and remove. That makes things a lot more practical. And the fact that we can do it in a kind of cost-effective and efficient way that should drive down the cost of uh, actually developing these uh, therapies and the cost of delivering them to the patient. So I think it will have a real impact all the way through to the, the final consumer of the goods. So basically what makes these products unique and innovative is that 
compared to their um, other chromatography counterparts, such as um, bead-based or membrane-based resins, they're a lot faster and they're basically not slowed down by the diffusive elements that are essential in these other types of chromatography resins. Basically used an electrospun composite material, um, using um, coupled with like, different chemistries, and this bit basically like cause higher binding sites, and that would make it go a lot faster and wouldn't be limited by diffusion. And then also these products would be a lot more scalable, um, ranging from smaller products to medium and larger so that they can be used for research up until clinical or um, manufacturing purposes. So basically the thing that really motivates me is that a lot of um, the manufacturing processes that we do for products, um, we basically do in-house. Like we create our own manufacturing processes, and this kind of allows us to not have to rely on a lot of outside sources. We can kind of just like do a lot of things in-house. We can kind of break the rules a little bit. So um, this can kind of allow us to make these devices a lot more scalable to meet customer needs. One of the major benefits of the Australia DEP technology is the ability to use increased flow rates um, due to its open structure. Um, so as with like the Lensi Hero, the processing time is really short. So when we've been using it in the lab, it's been great to use as a screening tool because you can uh, test lots of different conditions all at the same time simultaneously. And in the bioprocessing sphere, uh, the quicker you can go, the better that's going to be to help get things to the clinic. So actually from September, I'm going to be starting my NGD studies working at UCL and my project's going to be focused on developing a process for the purification of exosomes of the Australia DEP technology. So the current options you have for purification of exosomes are very limited. For example, the gold standard is using ultracentrifugation, which only concentrates your exosomes. It doesn't also purify them. Whereas the Australia DEP technology, you'd be able to do both in one step and hopefully without damaging the exosomes, which is another issue with the ultracentrifugation. A key thing for me and what I would hope to see in the future is my process I develop over the next four years, uh, actually helping people get their exosome therapeutics to the clinic because there aren't currently any available. And this is one of the key roadblocks that people are facing to try and get there. So literally in September, it's going to be the official launch. So by the end of this year, we're going to have these new fibre devices in people's labs actually purifying viral vectors and plasmid DNA. So this is literally just months away from revolutionising the industry. So there's a huge unmet need at the moment in the um, cell and gene therapy market. So a lot of um, downstream process scientists are having to use um, more traditional techniques, such as those developed for um, these more traditional biotherapeutics. So at the moment, uh, it's very, very hard to get high recoveries and high functional titer of these viral vectors. Um, so literally, these companies are th throwing millions of pounds worth of feed socks away um, because the tools they have in place to purify them just aren't suitable. So we see this new fibre technology being a game changer for the industry. So it's going to be absolutely huge in terms of profitability, but also getting reducing these costs down of these very expensive biotherapeutics, so making them more available to the wider population. So it's going to be good. At the moment, the industry has really two camps. Um, this all has to do with how you get your therapy into the cell you're trying to treat. So at the moment, uh, um, scientists are using two different vector types. So this is how you get your drug or therapeutic into the cell. So you have either using viral vectors, which we're focusing on, or you have synthetic encapsulation, such as things like uh, lipid nanoparticles. So while lipid nanoparticles are very effective, they're great at transducing cells, uh, they're quite cheap to manufacture, they have the big downside is they're not very targeted. They will transduce almost all cell types. This means you have to be very careful when you dose someone at, that you fully understand how that uh, therapeutics are being biodistributed. Um, with viral vectors, they have very, very good targeting. So they're designed to uh, infect only certain cell types. So this means scientists can actually engineer uh, these viral vectors to uh, um, target uh, disease areas. So this makes them very, very targeted, leading to uh, less potential uh, off-site uh, toxicity. So uh, really beneficial.